in the fabled land of Northern California. Nestled in the Valley of Sacramento, two friends begin a journey to enlighten the world about their experience living life as a Zinio. But what is a Zinio, you may ask? If you wish to know, then follow them on their adventures. Welcome to the Zinio Chronicles. This is James. This is Mike. And funny thing today, first of all, thank you all for, for listening, but a funny thing today, something didn't happen before our uh, the start of our podcast that normally does happen. Did you realize that, Mike? No. Right, I... before podcast, right, right before podcast, we were talking about video games because that's something that we both love. <laughs> I yes. think I even uh, I even suggested a video game to Mike that he really didn't know a whole lot about Yeah, he might uh, be interested in. And I will admit that... Uh, because of because of the fact that um, let's uh, I'll give you a moment, Mike, to be able to uh, to uh, inflate my ego a little bit, and I'll give the admission to the 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 few people listening. Okay. Um, you were I actually went and saw you at work directly after this happened. Uh, I I completed my college courses and I yes. graduated with my new uh, associate's degree in medical uh, billing and coding. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I'm looking at it right now. Associates of Applied Science degree in medical billing and coding. Yes, very, very well done, sir. Very well done. Which is, um, it, thank you, thank yeah, you, absolutely. And, and so, because I did that, I graduated. My wife got me some graduation present stuff. And long story short, she's she somehow finagled me into uh, being a part of the animal crossing universe which is how the uh conversation <laughs> kind of started yes people yeah. i'm playing animal crossing anybody that uh anybody that wants to i guess visit my island or have me visit theirs that's listening um hit us up on the facebook page and we i, I can see what can be done about that oh man I mean, it's not like we have you know thousands and thousands of uh of listeners but hey maybe somebody on the youtube page uh that that checks out on youtube yes we're on youtube everybody i know it's a little early for this mike but uh i'm still gonna bring it up um <laughs> that, anybody sure. that's listening on it. youtube they they're like hey that 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 one uh Kind of still fat guy, but not as fat as he was before guy on uh, the Zinio Chronicles. Maybe I want to check out his island and see what it's like. Um, so anyway, uh, we were talking about video games. The one thing that didn't happen before the before the podcast, normally Mike has the same exact question for me. And I'm kind of glad he didn't ask the question today. You know what your normal question is, Mike? You know, it's done by reflex. Sometimes I just I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Well, you were earlier too, I'm guessing, because normally what Mike does is ask me, so what do we have for a topic today? Ah, uh, yes. And sometimes sometimes I say, yes, we have a topic, yada, yada, yada. And sometimes he's like, okay, cool. And sometimes he's like, are you sure you want to talk about that? Uh, and sometimes, sometimes he's like, okay, yeah. but I also have this topic. And some, and again, sometimes I'll say, I'll say, I don't have anything. What do you got? Um, and he'll be like, oh, I got this I'd like to talk about or that I'd like to talk about. And then sometimes nobody has the topic and it's just like, you know what? We'll just start having a conversation and see what happens. Well, <laughs> Mike so I'm did not you, ask me. I didn't. My, yeah, I Mike, didn't ask before the podcast this morning. No, you didn't ask me. And I am super excited that you didn't ask me because I actually have two topics to talk about. Oh, really? One that's one that's serious. And by by this, I say it's, it, it's an important, serious thing. It's about a uh, an event that happened this week oh. and technically an event that is happening today. And just so we're clear what today is, you'll be hearing this on Monday, but we're recording this on Saturday, the 19th of June. Yes. So I want that to be clear as we go into the discussion, because the first topic we will talk about is the serious thing that is uh, now the reality of the 19th of june and then the mm -hmm. second thing we'll talk about after the break uh, we're going to end with a little bit of levity um even though the matter that we have to talk about is very very serious it's serious in a more amusing way and not in the serious way that the the truly serious and important way that the first topic is you see what i'm saying so I, it's like I, yes. the second topic is mock serious. And I want to be clear about that. Normally okay. uh, on a normal occasion, I would like be, make it sound super serious when it's just the mock seriousness. But we have something <laughs> important to talk about first. So much prefacing. Um, I love it. I know. So the first thing we are going to talk about is the fact that it is June 19th. Yes. And June 19th is now being recognized 
as a federal holiday. Yeah, national federal holiday. Means you can't go to the bank. Does that mean that this year they're not going to deliver mail today, or is that going to take a, start taking effect next year? That is a good question. I mean, I don't if it's been declared. Like, yeah, well, it was uh, declared I, I two days ago. Well, yes, but I mean, that doesn't mean you if if you've declared it before it happens, do you still celebrate it on a national level? I would assume that you probably would. You, um, you'd guess that they'd already be prepared for you'd yeah. already be prepared for it. But again, and by the way, I want to, US, I want to, uh, this is the U S government we're talking about. Yeah. Here, so they're not prepared <laughs> for anything. Well, there's, there's definitely some other, there's obviously a lot of other problems that need to be fixed. And I don't want to necessarily get too deep into that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. but it, it definitely can't be, it cannot be solved with just declaring a national holiday. Let's be real, but no, at least it, this it, opens it, the door for the be. subject to be talked about. And that's the point. Well, and, and for clarity's sake, for people who, for some reason, don't know, and there are people that don't know, I actually, uh, I actually had to explain the, the fact that there was a holiday, or there was going to be a holiday, called Juneteenth, to somebody who, who I explained it to to an extent uh, last year when the discussion had become a, a major thing during yeah. all of the protesting and riots that were happening. Yeah, when it finally year. became like open discussion, public information. I mean, it's been public yeah, information. Po- you could have a discussion, but nobody was having it. Not well, until n- really. Let's, no, let's, you know. let's, let's, re- let's, let's be honest. Okay, let's be honest. Yeah. Nobody white was having the discussion. Yes, and that's what I mean by that. Uh, yeah, let me walk yeah, back nobody, a statement or two because I'm not no, trying to make light of this situation. No. This is something that you're absolutely right is very serious. And so the bank thing that I said earlier, I wasn't saying it to be facetious. I wasn't saying oh, it to be they're, lighthearted they're, at all. And 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 there no, even even in even in this, moments of seriousness. Yeah, this is real this is of, real deal a, stuff. A little bit of but a, but a little bit of lighthearted and a little bit of 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 appropriate comedy is okay. Again, the fact that the fact that within within 24 hours of my mother passing, me and my sisters and my father were able to make uh, different jokes about things. Yeah, we're the people that were most affected by the situation, and that was a very emotional, very significant moment in in our lives, and a very hard moment to deal with. Yeah, and part of the way that we deal with hard moments as as a family and as, just as individual people, the way that we've learned to deal with those is by injecting a little bit of humor in it. And yeah. it, that doesn't necessarily work for all people. And there's levels of humor that you can have. Your humor that you were using was perfectly fine. It was not in any way detrimental towards the purpose of Juneteenth and the 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 idea behind it. There still has to be some availability for humor as long as it is not in a in any form attacking anybody or or in an attempt to be hurtful. Okay. Um, and saying yeah yeah you can't go any to, to the banks. That's not necessarily hurtful unless you're unless you're saying it like well because of this holiday I can't go into right. Banks it's about anymore. being and that was not your yeah that wasn't your tone or intention. No um, no and, and, and yeah I just wanted to make same sure thing, of that. same thing same thing with the mail thing is you know that's my my tone and intention is not. Uh, crap, I'm not going to get my mail day. It's like, is the mail running? I don't know. It's brand new. Is it going to happen or not? We'll see. But it's another day that the mail may not run. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the point, the, the, the point here is this isn't something that, um, and the, the, the person that asked about it, cause I, I, I mentioned it yesterday to them and they're like, okay, yeah, we talked about this last year. What exactly is this? And I, I, I was even uninformed me who likes to think I'm informed about a lot of things. I was even uninformed and gave incorrect information about what it was supposed to be commemorating. And then after, after seeing that person coming home, doing some research, cause I thought to myself, this person didn't know what it was. I, I'm going to do some research because I want to talk about this on the podcast. Because if one person I know doesn't know, there's probably a lot of people out there that don't know. And of course the person that I was speaking to was white. I'm white. So these are things that have not been a part of our collective consciousness growing up. They have not been things that have been passed down through our family, which is the only way that the black community in America has heard about this for all the years preceding this is through the connections of their family, teaching them about, about black history and black heritage because it's not taught the same way in schools. The date is mentioned in schools when they are teaching about emancipation but it's 
Yeah, they mention the date and then it's done. Nothing else is said about it. It's uh, like here you, know here you go. Here's the date and we're done with it. Did I, I got a question some, for you actually? Speaking yeah. of which, because this is something that the two of us went to school at relatively the same time, right? I don't remember hearing mention of Juneteenth at any point in grade school all the way through high school. Like maybe if it was mentioned I, once, I heard. I thought I heard no, about I, it like the, during. Yeah, it, it would have been mentioned once, and it would have been mentioned. As they were talking about the end of the Civil War, they right. would have talked about the fact that in Texas, the last, the the basically Texas was the last place where the Emancipation Proclamation was announced, mm-hmm. and it was on June nineteenth, eighteen sixty three, that that was announced. And even then, even then, there were some slave owners in Texas who did not tell their slaves. Of course, they didn't. Until, didn. well, actually, some never did, and the slaves just found out. Yeah. But yeah, but June nineteenth was the final day where it was essentially um, the basically the last was, place yeah. in the in the in the United States at that point in what was the United States at that point the last place where they had to they uh, finally announced the Emancipation Proclamation to so to essentially everybody. the idea is that is that Juneteenth is the day that it was it was legitimately final. Everybody knew, not the signing of the Emancipation the, Proclamation, the, not the writing, no, the, not the, the, the declaration. The idea, it was the fact that finally it was unequivocally undeniable. Every single state in the entire nation knew that slavery was technically ended, right? Basically, yeah. I mean, it's, on a it's legal sense, idea, on a legal level. It's basically basically the idea that the last, the, the very last slaves to hear about the Emancipation Proclamation in the United States of the very last slaves to hear that they were free and no longer slaves happened on June 19th, 1863. That's the, that's the, the, okay. the kind of idea around it. And the idea that it is basically an Independence Day for yeah. anybody that is descendant of slaves. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. It's and, it's the same um, as it, it's when you're looking at even though it's kind of like a, a real uh it, it's it's got that same it has the same levity to it as as and I, I am say, not saying this to be cuz we trivialize uh, you know, you a know, lot of this kind before, of stuff like but when you're looking you, at like St. Patrick's Day or Cinco de Mayo or something like that. Yeah. Um okay. a lot of that has been convoluted and a lot of it has been kind of well, Saint Saint, uh, Saint Patrick's Day is not necessarily, yeah, okay. It's not the same, saying, day, yeah, day. but it's that it's that and same Saints. under, yeah. It's it's not a national like Cinco de Mayo is Cinco de Mayo a national holiday? Like, do do no. do yeah? So the mail yeah, is still delivered. Like, it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, um, on Saint those Patrick's days, day it's not an excuse to drink. Holiday. You know, like this, it it is as is as is Saint Patrick's Day. They're basically yeah. in America. In America, we for most of our holidays, we just look for excuses to drink and blow shit up. Right. Um, I just don't want to like I just don't want like I don't want that well, no, kind of abuse I, to happen to this holiday. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, here here's the here's the deal. Uh if it if it if it runs anything like um like uh America's Independence Day from uh British rule, uh July 4th, which is funny because that's just some arbitrary date. Uh we we've gone over before when the declaration of independence was actually signed, when it was actually ratified and that July 4th is just a date that kind of got pulled out of somebody's ass. Yeah. Um, it's really not, uh, nothing really specific of importance happened on that day, July 2nd, more things happened than what happened on July 4th, but that's, that's America's independence day. And if, if this goes anything like that, um, it's still it's still Americans we're talking about that this Independence Day is for. So at some point or another, somebody's going to want to blow stuff up. Yes, that ta- that t- tendency to have fireworks and whatnot and buy blow stuff up. I want to clarify here. I'm talking about fireworks and and the, oh, right the, those displays those displays that happen in uh, on the Fourth of July. I'm not talking about like bad blowing things up like buildings and whatnot. That's a whole right. different story. Right. Um, but but typically fireworks have uh, and you know fireworks shooting off guns that uh, on the Fourth of July. That is a very white redneck thing. I'm not saying that other groups don't uh, don't uh, get involved. But that's kind of, uh, you know, that th- there, there is, there is a specific stereotype that you think about when you think oh, about for fireworks sure. on the 4th of July. Definitely. Um, whether it's, whether it's wrong or right to think of the stereotype, there is one that you think about. Um, oh God, no, I got my first is... major experience. I, I, I feel like I had one of my first major experiences of actually being like really old and being pissed off at kids. Speaking of fireworks, this is completely off subject, okay. but I wanted to tell you about this. So I'm doing a live stream 
with uh we're doing a chronosode live stream with tash right and yeah. right in the middle of our live stream at like 9 30 at night almost 10 o'clock oh no oh no uh kids start lighting m80s at the house next door to me oh no on the street how dare they how dare they at 9 30 at night i know That's right way too late to be making that kind of noise <laughs> I know it sounds stupid. It sounds really dumb, but it's the fact that it was M80s first off, which aren't legal here. And second off, it set off every single one of the dogs in the house where one of them, one of them actually gets like, he gets almost, he's almost tremor level scared when he hears explosions. Uh Um, Most of the dogs tend to be okay, but there is one that gets absolutely terrified and has to hide underneath us. He gets up, he groups up into a ball and he is just completely terrified and barking Which one is it? and freaking out. Oso. Is it Adam? No. It's Oso. Okay, Adam's Oso. Fine. That makes sense. Adam's like, what the fuck? And then he starts barking. Um, yeah, but, he's gonna, Adam's going Adam's to go kill it. Yeah, Adam's going to kill it. Adam wants to kill the thing. And we so we hear the big boom, and we're like, what the hell is that? And it's in the middle of our stream. And I know that it's not necessarily smart when you hear explosions to open the front door, but I couldn't see anything. So I was wondering, because it seemed really close. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I open my front door and another one goes off and I see the sparks fly and I slam my door shut immediately. But it was so loud call, that it called the cops. Oh, yeah, I called non-emergency line. I wasn't 911 and I'm not I'm not that kind of an asshole, but I yeah, did. You're old. I did You're not. Old. Yeah. I, sorry, dude. You like, might even be you might even be older than me at this point. <laughs> Look, that might man, have put like, you over the edge. And that's even with all my all my all my kid modifiers, because I've got I've got three kids. So that puts an extra uh, I know. 12 years on me already. I know. I felt like I felt so what? damned old when but, I did it. But I was just like, you know what, man? My dogs are barking all over the fucking place. Did, uh, you, did you have your did you have your Metamucil today? Did you drink your insurer? No, I did not. Not yet. Bring, do I need not yet. You, that's for later. You one of the. Do I need to bring you one of the extra walkers that I have? No, 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 no. I'm good there. I got the one. I'm good there. The I've only got a small limp, James. Time. Okay, just a small one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I did. I, I confess to it, but you it's feel, just the fact that, like, you, you feel the was, pain. No, you're experiencing. You're experiencing. <sighs> talk about the pain that I actually feel every single year at Fourth <laughs> of July. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I too, I too am a pet owner. Okay. Um, I grew up. I grew up in a household with dogs. And I grew up in a household with uh, with Shelties, uh, Shetland Sheepdogs, which are basically a mix between a Springer Spaniel and a Collie. They look like a Collie, but they're like smaller. People call them miniature Collies. They are not miniature Collies. They are their own separate breed of dog. Right. They look exactly like a Collie. Uh, or they call them Shelties if they know what they're talking about. Okay. And very loyal, very smart dogs, good, fairly decent working dogs like, like a collie would be, but they have the ener- the energy level of, of what a spaniel has. So they're bouncing off the freaking walls all the time. And they are definitely, um, they have like tiny dog syndrome in a medium sized dog. So even the slightest noise, they are just barking like crazy and want to kill it. And right. we would have to sedate every one of the dogs every year at uh when when i when i was younger and lived in the uh in the east bay near uh you know east bay of san francisco um i uh, we'd have to sedate the dogs every year and be huddled inside with them i never went to fireworks shows as a kid i never did fireworks as a kid um my kids have only done fireworks one year when i was persuaded to by one of their aunts and the aunt's boyfriend and i hated the entire <laughs> thing and i told i told my wife it would never happen again and basically we huddle inside trying to, we only have one dog at this point and he's, he's super chill. He hears the noises and he's just like, okay, whatever. Um, he, you know, the door, the, the door alarm goes off. Cause I have, I have like chimes on my doors mm-hmm. to open the door. Cause I have an alarm system. Mm-hmm. So anytime a door opens, we hear a chime. Um, w- when he hears that chime, he'll go ballistic. Cause he wants to know who the hell's coming in the house. Yeah. Yeah. But, but most anything else most noises he's just kind of like nah i don't care yeah he's my- very he's he's super chill about that but no i've i've I, i've had the problems with pets my entire life having that issue and then you see it, it it never fails the day after uh day after um uh no i'm not even thinking independence day day after fourth of july you you see a bunch of people on facebook posting all their animals that are that have gone missing that got out of the backyard which is just irritating to me because like 
you know, my, my dog got out of the backyard while we were out at the fireworks. Okay. So you put your dog in the backyard. You went to watch fireworks and what set your dog off to go run out the fireworks. You're right. an idiot and you shouldn't be allowed to own a pet. Just saying. yeah, yeah. It, but it, you um, got to take the responsibility with that and realize that these types of animals yeah. are not like. If that's the case, you're going to have to train them to not be freaked out by fireworks. But most animals, or, or especially just, dogs, they do they freak the fuck out. Explosions, yeah. unexplained yeah. phenomena like that to a dog is terrifying. It's fucking yeah, terrifying. They don't get it? Yeah, I don't get it. It's, it's terrifying for people sometimes. But anyway, um. We'll we'll have more of this conversation uh, in a, in, a, in two weeks yeah. when we get closer to uh, to Independence Day. But let's focus back again. See, we're we're I, I don't know. I'd like I, I'm I'm worried we're doing the white thing and not focusing properly on this on what today is. <laughs> today, <laughs> well, seriously, I mean, we can't. I'll yeah. call myself out on it. I'll call myself out on it. And here's the thing. Well, I feel like uh, there are I, moments, I'm, I'm a little no, there, there are moments, like trying to be. I'm trying to be uh, to tread lightly as well. I feel like I need to okay, but here's stay the, in my lane on this. You know that. what I mean? I was hoping you'd say that. I was hoping you'd say that because yeah. here's my here's my thing. I understand the idea and the concept of wanting to stay in your lane and wanting to tread lightly, but at the same time, I f- I, I worry that it took so long for the rest of the country to understand the importance of a day like this. Not just for the Black Americans that that are especially the ones descendant from families that 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 were slaves, but any Black Americans. That this this day is 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 significant for a very important reason. This was this would have been the day. This is the day they want to recognize as the day when this country, as a as a country, as an organization, finally viewed people with their skin tone as people yes. instead of property. Yes. And not only, not only should they be celebrating this because, and again, it doesn't matter whether it doesn't matter whether you're, you are descendant from a family that was, that were, that were slaves or not. It's the fact that any person of African descent, any person that has any kind of darker skin tone than what is acceptable as white skin tone. Yeah. Can look at that and can look at that date and say that is the day that this country recognized people that look like me as people instead of treating us like property. And we need to not just tread lightly on this. We need to be pushing this on to the people that don't want to recognize this as a holiday, the people that are fighting back, because this is a moment we should look back on this moment as a moment when our country was finally wanting to treat people the right way. Our, our possible ancestors, the white ancestors of, of America were finally recognizing different looking people as real people, instead of treating them like property. This is a moment we should be proud of as a moment of at least some growth. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. We're not where we need to be, but the fact that we're able to, that we, that this is being recognized, that it is made into a federal holiday that will be on every calendar. Now that will have the banks closed and the post office not working. This will have to be recognized and it should be because we need to see this was a this was a possible turning moment in history. Now the, the the thing that needs to to happen with this also is not just to see that it was a turning moment in our history as a country, but where it didn't do enough. It only did so much. And where even though it changed the way legally mm-hmm. by the federal government, an entire class of people was viewed as people finally as living entities instead of just things that can be bought and sold. It still did not do enough in the society and the culture to bring about a true seeing others as the same as us, as the same as, as the same as the, the dominant group. Yeah. I I, I would say it's yeah. still, it, it yeah, it, it made a legal definition, but it did not change the way society was. And we are still at 1863. So we are 150 years, almost over 150 years removed from that. And we still are having the issues of equality. We're having the issues of this is being, this is made into a holiday and people are fighting back. People are fighting back to the point of trying to say, 
Uh, so what, they're going to take away regular Independence Day now that we have Black Independence Day? Why can't they why, you know, why can't they both be there? Why can't they both be celebrated and both be understood as this? The July 4th is the day that is recognized as the day that the United States became an independent nation from British rule, British colonial rule. June 19th is the day recognized when Black Americans became free to be people and not property. Yeah, in this country, free it's not to be free to be recognized because they were always people. It's not like suddenly, oh, you weren't a person before, but now now you are. They were always people. They just weren't treated and recognized as people. And when we when we stay in our lane too much and say, oh, I'm I'm the white guy, I really shouldn't talk about this. We should talk about it with deference, and we should talk about it with respect. And even if we make mistakes in the way that we talk about it, and somebody lets us know, and we apologize for the mistake, and we do it right the next time, we still do need to talk about it. Because if we don't, we're not going to help the problem. We are by by not talking about it, by not bringing awareness to it. Well, we okay. don't help the problem. Let's. We don't help make it better. Okay, hold on one second. I understand where you're coming from, and that makes sense. Um, I am in the mindset currently, uh, especially learning more and more about it as I go. I feel like I it's not that I don't want to talk about it at all. That's not the point. Yeah. I, and it's not careful. that I don't want to talk about it for fear of making a mistake or something or something. But the thing is, is that I feel like it is um, it's still my time to listen to this kind of stuff. This is new information that I have okay, been. And this is this is relatively new information. Did I know the relative basics? Kind of. And I only say kind of because I only kind of know. And most Americans only kind of know maybe. And most yeah. and many of them, dependent upon the region, don't even understand the shit at all. They don't understand what the quote unquote end of slavery was. They don't understand how long it lasted, what was going on. They don't understand certain characteristics that are specifically uh, tied only to American culture. How fucked up we did it. I heard that. You didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was that was Hulu letting me know that it's Juneteenth. No, I mean, that's things I <laughs> Hulu, yes. Fucking uh, Hulu. Okay, I, I let actually, me let me let me keep uh let, let me let me finish my thought on this. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway, I am in right now. I am still learning so much that I don't want to make an assumptive. Um, I don't want to be assumptive of any of this information until I have a much better understanding of what's happening. I am blown out. I actually started watching a series um on it. Um, are you familiar with the Crash Course series? I think I might have talked about it before. Um, that's um, the one that's run by PBS. It's it run before, on YouTube. But, yeah. Uh, you probably talked about it before, but it's not It's not clicking in my mind. There's memory. a series of videos that are between, you know, five and 20 minutes long, dependent upon the specific lesson on stuff. And yeah. these they do stuff on other, on, on you know, the on European history. Like, and it's called Crash Course because it's literally just like five minutes on an era, you know? Uh, crash yeah. course on the American Revolution, on the Black Plague, on the Renaissance, on XYZ, right? They just this year started a crash course. It's supposed to be like 40 or 50 videos, I think, um, uh, that's being released. It's one a week, and it's going to take place over uh, – it, it's about – I want to say it's between 40 and 50 videos. It should end by the end of the year, if not a, go a little beyond that. But it is crash course on African-American history, specifically on – uh, 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 with a lot of concentration, of course, on slavery, civil rights, and all that kind of, and and all that that encompasses the history of of uh, encompasses Black history in the United States. Yeah, and uh, I have, I think it's only like five videos deep right now. But man, I'm telling you what, like there are so many things that I was not privy to when it came down to everything. We're talking the intercontinental slave trade, starting it out the way we treated it versus the way that other countries treated it. Um, yeah. The way that slavery was continually challenged. There was a challenge by Quakers, like a group of like four Quakers that said it was a violation of the Bible in yeah. court that slavery was absolutely wrong. It showed the difference between... I've, I've learned a bit about the difference between how white slaves and indentured servants were treated versus black slaves. Um, the There is such a rich and just 
large, detailed history. And this is, I well, believe, I'm, is run. Um, this is, I know it's introduced by, and I'm sure that most of the information is compiled by a gentleman who is, I believe, he received a doctorate in African American history, and it was well, a, it was like a subject that didn't have that. I know that when he started, it didn't have that. There, there was no way that you could that you could actually re- uh, properly like there wasn't enough properly compiled information on African American history at the time that he started to do his research and figure this stuff out and make sense of his make sense of his family of his bloodline. Um, and that's why he did it. And it's a fascinating just reason. But the history that's being told on it is so rich. And there's so many details that I'm still absorbing information. So my point is that I feel so grossly uneducated in this subject that I don't think it's fair for me to make uh, okay. certain uh, to, to, to make I, certain I, statements. And I want to try to like for myself, I want to try to avoid those statements because I'm I learning understand. so much. I understand, but I, I just, just to ponder, don't answer. This is something just to ponder. Okay. How much of that, how much of that is you still learning and how much of that is societal pressure not to, not to respond because of because of various issues, like I say, this is not a thing to answer. This okay. is a thing to think about, and and to, to I mean, get I, your, I, I get feel like thought, I have an answer. Get you in the on process. That. Yeah. Get, well, just to get you in the process of it. Um, think of other subjects where you only had so much knowledge of, and you were still learning the knowledge of, but you were maybe willing to talk about those subjects more, and put out a little more with those subjects because they were safer subjects to put out information, whereas societal pressure maybe make it make this a more difficult subject. Again, okay, I have a question. I actually have a, I have a return question on that. That's a good question. Okay. I think you're I think you're right to ask it. Um, my response to that question is, where do you go and who do you ask without bringing up a painful thing? Without bringing up such a Sometimes. painful thing. Sometimes, sometimes for the sake of getting the information, you don't just ask somebody on the street. Of course, like you don't do no. that. You you don't. No, you don't. You don't you're just that up, but I street. want. Yeah, you know, I would like to know where do you collect this information and be able to verify it properly, especially when it wasn't concentrated on in the broad scope of the American education system for this is the a few hundred for four hundred years. Yes, this is the beauty of the modern age in that we do have resources. In which to in which to find them through the internet, and it is our it is on us like you, like you are doing. You're watching a you're watching a show. You do research about the things on the internet. When I was wrong, when I was speaking this, when I was having the conversation yesterday and gave a completely wrong reason for what Juneteenth was because I thought it was one thing from what little I had done of research on it, mm-hmm. and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not positive. Let me let me let me find out for sure. And I want to talk about this on the podcast because yeah. again, if one person doesn't know, then maybe more people don't know. And I found out I was completely in error. The thing that I said it was about had nothing to do. Well, it had something to do with it in the sense that it had something to do with with uh, with the Black American experience, but not the, the exact same thing at all. Period. I was completely wrong. And I went back to the person and said, "Hey, yo, I was wrong about this. This is what it's actually. This is what Juneteenth is actually about. So that makes it way more important than what I thought it was about." I yeah. was completely off base. And the thing is, we have to have those moments to be able to be off base. And you are right in the sense that to, in, in our history classes in school, in, in, uh, in you know, our, the standard education that we went, elementary, junior high, high school, that standard education, keep in mind, American history starts basically, they'll talk about pre-Columbian times. And notice, every basically thousands of years of history are lumped into pre-Columbian because as far as American historians are concerned, American historians, by the way, which are predominantly of European descent, therefore white, right? Everything before Columbus discovering America, unimportant. Oh, a little footnote, Leif Erikson landed somewhere yeah. in Canada. But otherwise, <laughs> everything before that gets lumped into pre-Columbian. You you learn about that in the first like week or two of class, and then the rest of it is spent on America and true American history. Because the only thing that mattered to, to the uh, historians writing about American history is what happened when white people came. Yeah. Native Americans yeah. are a footnote. Black Americans are a footnote. It wasn't until I took a U.S. history course in 
in junior college, even junior college, I took a U.S. history course that spent how that that was U.S. history up to the Civil War, and then you that was one course, and the second course was Civil War to present, and it actually spent. There's not a whole lot of time between the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. There's only like there's less than a hundred years between that. There's like 70, 80 years, something like that, ninety years. Uh, 1776 to uh, eight to the 1850s, 1860s. So, I mean, not a whole lot of time there. So there was actually a whole lot of time spent on the pre-Columbian era and all of the different Native American tribes that lived all throughout the United States and the huge civilizations that they have. And the fact that our Constitution is actually based on the Iroquois Nation uh, kind of charter of, of rules. Wow. There's there, there was so many things covered in. I took a Mexican American history class. Dear God, the things that I learned, the words that we use that <laughs> yeah. are that are Nahuatl words uh, from one of the Native American tribes that lived in what is modern day Mexico uh -huh. from the Aztecs. I mean, this is this, you know, avocado, chocolate, all Aztec words. <laughs> the language is the language is Nahuatl. Um, hell, even Texas is technically an Aztec word. So is Mexico. Um, but the, the, the richness of culture that, that is added in that, again, you're only going to get if you go into a specific study of history because they have been sidelined in history. And yes, I'm still learning things. I'm still learning more and more. I did a lot of research yesterday about it and I'm learning more and more about how celebrations are happening. The fact that one of the, one of the most high profile somewhat modern celebrations of Juneteenth before the last couple of years where it was brought finally to the mainstream forefront of, uh, of American consciousness was after the assassination of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. This is something that has been prominent and, you know, sadly a part uh, it's, it's a part of American culture, but a subset of American culture that the vast majority of American culture didn't want to, take part in. And again, I, I, I understand being respectful and I understand having some tread lightly and I understand trying to continue gather inform information, Yeah, but we still need to talk about these things. We still need to, even if we, again, even if we do make mistakes, some mistakes about them, correct our mistakes, find out the truth. You're yeah. right. Finding the people to go to, to get the information, not easy. They're not easy conversations to have. But they are necessary conversations to have if we want to move the public consciousness forward and if we truly want to be somebody that is trying to help the situation be better as opposed to let it be sidelined again. So I will admit I got caught off guard. Uh, only, you know, this only was found out about on the 17th of June since that's when it was oh. uh, written into things. That's uh, Biden signed it into law on the 17th. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying only got two days. So I don't have anything, uh, anything beyond the normal plans I had for uh, June 19th, which I did have plans and no, they're not father's day plans. Cause that's uh, tomorrow. And we already know that I don't really celebrate father's day. But <laughs> I, already, I already have my June 19th plans. So I don't have any Juneteenth plans, but I guarantee it will be something I will uh, look into probably ignoring just like every other holiday that I ignore except Christmas. Uh, cause, and I just, the only reason I celebrate Christmas is I like the trees and I like giving presents. No, I would like to, I, I would like to say like, I don't know as far as my opinion on it, um, on, on my opinion on celebrating, I don't know what to do. Like how, what, I don't feel like it's, I, how do I say this? I don't feel like it's my day. It's not my day to take to celebrate. You know, um, yeah, you I know mean, what, relax though? and take yeah, a day okay, off work, okay, I guess, but that's about it. You know, like just leave it at that. No, it's, it's not, it's not your day. It's not, it, it's, it, it isn't, it isn't man. See, here's the thing that that's where I think that that's where I think that we may be. I'm, I'm putting this out there. I think we may be in error by not celebrating it. It is the day to celebrate the fact that people that are your friends even if it's even if it didn't, even if you don't think it affected you in the sense that you're white, so your family probably wasn't slaves. So first of all, you don't know if you if you have African descent within your uh, within your family at some point or another, unless you've done a full genealogy. And I'm sure you've seen I many have. times uh, many different and, many different news articles. You yeah. get a full genealogy, so you know. So now that you're, now you're in the databases, so that they so you know that. <laughs> oh fuck off! I was in the database before anyway. Right? Like 
I'm they, they, I, they, honestly they like I'm in the database. I've been in they the database. Your, they have you in their database. How's your fucking phone, man? Like everybody's in the database. There's nobody who truly lives <laughs> off the grid. I'm, I know, I'm just <laughs> crap. Anyway, point point uh point is like I, I have a teacher from five G uh, is from, amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, you got you got the shot too, so that's even worse. No, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I I have a teacher from high school that you would have no idea that his that his family only two generations removed from him were uh, from from the South and were former slaves. Yeah. Wow. He has. There, there's nothing in his appearance that would ever suggest that from you, and yet and yet he's he he's gone to like family reunions down yeah. in the down in the South, and like he him him and his wife basically are the only white people in the picture and these are co- direct cousins of his <laughs> yeah they're the only white people in the picture and he's and his his family's just like yeah that's that's the white cousin he's he's, he's got a little black <laughs> in him but he's the white cousin and it's it, but it's but here's the thing it's, I, yes, I, I do yes, want to holiday hold on before before you move on because i had i had a point to follow up on that um i didn't want to uh i didn't want to leave that alone so the Uh, As far as me, as far as stating to not celebrate, like I'm not looking not to celebrate. I just don't know how. I don't know how do you approach this. That's it's it's for lack of again. This is a lack of knowledge. Like, and I like what you said because I should. And And I I, I like I I like what you said about it. The the uh, idea of look, this is the day that this is the day that it was finalized that that the family history of good people that you know your good friends and some family members were viewed as were, were finally were able to recognize that they were viewed as equals to a degree let's be honest legally legally at least legally legal to a degree were, i mean there's other things that obviously that they were not allowed uh which is an, no, uh, another other, subject other, entirely right that's another yeah, that's uh, another conversation but it other is things are it's something that's worth to celebrating to, to that, to dehumanize yes sure. it's something that's worth celebrating that i don't know how to do it appropriately and that's well, why and i'm that, gonna wait until i am taught what should be done because this is fresh some, man this is fresh on a national some, level to a lot yeah. of white people there's and, some lack of knowledge. Yeah. There's some lack of knowledge, and then there's some there's some fear. There's some there's some fear that exists in the doing it. You know, being being disrespectful, uh, uh, cultural appropriation, which is a, which is a, 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 is a <laughs> for some really people is a concern. <laughs> for some people who for some people it's a concern to not they don't want to misappropriate culture. Other people don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Yeah. And and don't understand why well, every bar what do you mean I can't go to every what do you mean bar I can't on put a holiday cornrows weekend. In? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean I can't put cornrows in? I mean I like the idea that on <laughs> St. Patrick's yeah. Day I, I like the idea on St. Patrick's Day, and this is coming from somebody who is predominantly Irish. I'm a firm believer on St. Patrick's Day. Everybody's fucking Irish. If you got a beer in your hand, everybody's Irish. I, it doesn't matter. We, we but the I, I think the Irish are very very open about that. I'm not saying that any other group isn't. No, they're very the welcoming. Irish, as far as they're concerned, yeah. as far as they're concerned, okay, you want to drink with us and and celebrate with us? Fine, as long yeah. as you're not an eye tie, we're good. Yeah. Eye tie being Italian, in case you didn't know. Um. Oh, oh, is that what that means? Jesus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have Italians in my family too and it's uh, actually it was f- funny enough. This I have, is okay. I have a grandparent. I I oh, Hold on. I have, I have I have a grandparent. <laughs> I have grandparents. I have grandparents. My grandfather is is almost like 90% Irish. Come from an Irish family that's literally like one or two generations off the boat from Ireland. Uh potato farmers, of course. And his second wife was a was was a woman who was uh whose family was sicilian she was the first generation born in the united states she was a sicilian from new jersey okay whose, on, whose uncles and cousins and extended family used to do personal business in the back of her dad's shop uh pulling up in big lincolns and other you know black cars and they had villas in aruba what i'm saying is that that part of the family is mob connected oh Sicilian, Italian. <laughs> and so this i this divorced irishman with kids married the sicilian uh woman whose family was part of the mob and that didn't go over well both catholic but it doesn't matter because irish catholics and italian catholics no 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 mixy uh, but they did <laughs> Um, so I can, I, I actually, I do have the lineage to be able to, uh, make those jokes and it's okay. I have the family history to make those jokes. Um, 
and it's a thing. It is. It's. I don't know why it's a thing that the that the Irish and the. I, I think it's the the reason. I think it's because Irish and the Italian are some of the most fervent Catholics that exist, and right. so it's like a Catholic thing on top of it being a, a, a different country thing. Plus, their flags are very similar, so there's that too. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> okay, it's a thing. <laughs> it's just a thing. Um, God. <laughs> but anyway, no, no, we 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 we. we if we are going to be proper friends, proper supporters of not just the friends and family that we have that are black Americans, but all black Americans, all Americans, regardless of your skin, don't because all we're talking about here, all those words use the white, the word white, the word black, that's all, all not all of it, but it is, is mainly used to try to denote the difference in skin tone. Now there are cultural things involved in it as well, but that's because the cultural things have built because they've been forced into these little slots for all these years because of people having an issue with the color of somebody's skin. We want to be in, we want to be a friend to all of our, all, all of our fellow Americans, regardless of anything that defines them as different from somebody else. They're still all Americans. They're still all here. And we should try to support them in the way we can. You're right. We don't know what to do. As white people, we don't know what to do on Juneteenth to celebrate it properly. We don't know what the traditional things are unless we've been brought in to be a part of them before. But we should learn and we should be we should be wanting to be a part of the celebration. This is this should be a holiday for us to support and love all of our friends, all of all the people we know, all of the people that are Americans. And this is one of those that is just like July 4th. This is a distinctly American holiday. Christmas is not an American holiday. There's Christmas all over the place. Thanksgiving is an American holiday. This is an American holiday. Mm -hmm. And we need to we need to look at it as Americans. And trust me, I will find out what the appropriate the appropriate and respectful proper food is to have on Juneteenth. Respectful, mind you. I'm not going to go in and play into any stereotypes. Respectful. Just like spam. Okay. Even though there's stereotypes that spam might play into okay. for July 4th. Spam is there for July 4th. Not because, even though spam wasn't around during the War of Independence, doesn't matter. It is still a patriotic American food because it helped win the war. So, I'll find something. Because you have to be able to eat on a holiday. Make sure you're eating the right things and not being uh, stereotypical and and wrong yeah that's that's going to be a uh <laughs> that'll be that'll be a that'll be the tight rope to, to have to walk but anyway um so people juneteenth is now a federal holiday we need to recognize it we need to learn more about it like mike is doing like i am trying to do so when we when we do talk about it when people are, are wondering what the heck is this juneteenth we have information to give and it's always okay to say that's all the information i have i don't know more but let's learn more because then we can grow then we can become better Right? Yeah, exactly. So, so happy Juneteenth, Mike. Ha happy Juneteenth? Yeah, let's say I'm saying that to you. Ha happy Juneteenth. Can uh, Happy Juneteenth. I think that's the way we're supposed to say it. We I think know. so. If we're I, wrong, I, I... somebody will tell us and we'll do it right the next time. Okay. All right. Right now we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have something that's a that while is a little bit less of a serious topic. It is something that uh, has been a major topic of debate debate for the last week or so. I'm not going to let Mike know because I want to surprise him because I'm, I'm sure he doesn't think I'm going to bring this up. Okay. And there have been similar discussions that have, that have actually happened in mainstream media back when we were teenagers. Oh, not really? Not quite the same, but similar discussions. And we're going to talk about the newest kind of scandal in that and again more levity in the second half although there is, it is to, to a certain group of people this is serious content so we'll oh, be back okay. in just a minute all right hey friends this is mike from the zennial chronicles reminding you to subscribe to our youtube channel you can also follow us on twitter and facebook at zencron spelled x-e-n-c-h-r-o-n to keep up to date on all things txc and please check out our official website the zennial chronicles.com or if that's too much to type zencron.com Thanks again for listening. And now back to the show. And we're back, everybody. Okay. 
Okay, again, I want to remind people that this second half we're going to be we're going to be talking about a subject that has a lot more levity to it, and a subject that uh, I think we can both speak a little bit more confidently on, seeing as we are fairly knowledgeable, hopefully about uh, about all the things contained within this conversation. Okay, this isn't one where we need uh, where I think we need a little more. Knowledge. Okay. So, are okay, you ready for good. this, sir? Yeah, yeah, let's go. So, you'd say that you and I are both fairly avid comic book fans right uh i would i would say like i am not as deeply educated i think in even most comic books as you would be but okay. i would relatively well, say okay so when it comes to say uh there's two there's kind of there's multiple different comic houses but the 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 two biggest comic book houses in in the united states are have got to be marvel and dc right? yes very much so and now and now when it comes to Marvel, I would say my knowledge of, of the different things involved with Marvel is probably more than yours. That's that because Marvel's yes. more my my comic book. House that's your things, that's your forte. Yeah. To, yeah. Especially when it comes to the cinematic universes, but even even just the universe in general and some of the knowledge of characters, their histories, their inner workings, all that kind of stuff. That's usually more my forte. Um, DC is a little more your forte, although I do have some knowledge, especially about some of the, the main characters in, in, in DC. I have some pretty good knowledge. Well, the comic book world has been in a little bit of an uproar for the past week. Why is that? With regards, with regards to one specific comic book character. Well, technically speaking, three specific comic book characters three in the of the dc universe and let me tell you how this all started okay a few years ago uh you even talked to me about a, a new animated series uh basically an an r-rated in some ways almost x-rated animated series that was on uh subscription services oh god get it anywhere and this or uh, this this series would be the <laughs> Quinn series. you know what we're talking about now don't you oh yes i do isn't that funny? You see why I was kind of tickled about talking about this? I love with, this. With, yeah. So th- there's the Harley Quinn animated series, which I have watched bits and pieces of. And it is this is not a series for kids. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco from, uh, from um, Big Bang Theory is the voice of Harley Quinn in this. Yes. And it is, it is very adult. Very adult. Very much. There is a lot of violence, a lot of foul language. Um, my understanding, a lot of sexual situations. Yes. Um, this is, this is not for kids. This is a complete adult thing that's being done. Well, the creators of this have been given a lot of license to do a lot of fun things with these characters and go way overboard with the characters in many, many ways. However, for one of the recent seasons or one of the new seasons that are going to be put out, um, the, the showrunners had an idea for one of probably one of if not the biggest comic book character of all time at least in the top three i mean the top three comic book characters of all time you if you want to look at sales you want to look at cultural understanding uh superman right yes uh, spider spider-man interestingly yes. they share the same color scheme okay and yes. and batman and Okay. Batman is the one we're talking about since it's a Harley Quinn uh, TV show. <laughs> Batman was going to it has been featured in the show, and there was a specific scene that the the creators of this show wanted to include. I'm, I'm guessing in this in this show, Batman and Catwoman have some kind of a relationship, which has happened many different times in the yeah, comic books. Yeah, yeah. There's been sexual relation in the comic books. The scene in question that they wanted to have was Batman having a conversation with Catwoman directly after he was performing oral sex on her. <laughs> DC, DC said, DC said, no, you can't do that, Steve. Why? Batman, or the, the Harley Quinn showrunners were like, why can't, why can't we do that scene? Why, I mean, why can't we have that? DC's response, and this is what set off a firestorm in the comic world. Now, this is not something that was paid attention to in the general world because last week there was far more important things in general society to be uh, to be paid attention to. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please re-listen to the first part of this podcast because that happened, uh, making that a holiday happened this last week. So that was kind of 
really important, but in the comics world, this was a big deal. Oh no. And I, I don't know what DC, they said. Yeah. The response from DC was heroes don't do that. Excuse me? That was DC's official response to the showrunners for Heroes Harley Don't Quinn. Wait. Heroes, heroes don't do that. So heroes don't do that as in heroes don't perform oral sex? Is that specifically what they're talking it. about? Or That's one way heroes do it. not do that? Because they fucking reneged on that back during the Killing Joke animation. Literally the end of the first portion of the Killing Joke animation, the Killing Joke animated film sir. with Hamill and Conroy, by the way, ended in a love scene with Batman and Batgirl? No. First off, everybody fucking hated that, but they seem to have greenlit that. Thanks, Bruce Tim. What made you think that was a good idea? And you all of a sudden okay. now have a problem with Batman going down on Catwoman in an no, in, like really? That's the that's the question. Is, it's not like it happened. What, it's not like you're watching it happen. You want to watch um, it happen? You can go to various websites and see that shit. Well, and the the thing is, the thing is, that's ridiculous. The question is the question is whether it's the whether it's specifically oral sex or whether it's a man performing oral sex on a woman. Okay, so they said heroes don't do that, but they didn't explain it, and now everybody's interpreting no. it because it's a broad ass uh, topic. Uh, oh yes, everybody is interpreting oh, it, and my. there are even there are even there are even people involved with Batman in various cinematic uh, uh, in various uh, media <laughs> w- uh, ways that I have issued personal statements about it oh that's uh, great just Diedrich, so you're oh yeah i gotta hear this who's Diedrich, who turned Diedrich to bader <laughs> Diedrich bader who has been one of the voices of, he is of the batman. voice of batman and harley quinn he is the harley quinn he voice is the harley batman. quinn batman he was in brave and the bold and they got him for harley quinn what did uh, he his say please is, his response is yes batman does, yes, <laughs> does. um Val Kilmer coming out of obscurity <laughs> actually uh actually posted something on Twitter using a scene from Batman Forever where uh he's talking to Chase Meridian about uh you know having some wine and giving it a go. That's that's the scene that, that oh! exact, uh bit of dialogue is was his response. And then and then one of the people that has one of the most tumultuous histories with Batman, recent histories, I should say, with Batman, decided to also take to Twitter because that's the place to respond to these things. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the only word that was uh, a picture was posted. And the only word that was posted was the word canon. Canon? What canon. was the picture? Mm-hmm. What was the, the picture? The picture is... The picture is a shot. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a piece of art drawing. Um, shot kind of looking like it's from the perspective of right by Catwoman's head, and Batman's face is buried in her crotch. What? And he's in full uniform, and he's looking. He's looking directly at uh, you know the artist uh, drawing. Yeah. Whoa. It's, a, it's, it's, it's actually a. Uh, it's actually one of those things that's um, you have to you have to literally click on the thing to to make it visible to see it because uh, it's considered you know. Okay, I think I have Let's an idea who can... this might possibly be. Let's... And on top of that, I have to ask: Is this an actual comic panel? Is this canonical well, art? I don't know if it's. I, I don't know about that for sure. But it's got it. That sounds like Affleck. No, it's you're, not Affleck. You're close, though. Who is it? Who who else would it be if I'm saying you're close with uh with fucking Kevin? Is it Kevin? You just you didn't say that you said he had no, a tumultuous relationship Kevin. with Batman, but you didn't say that he played Batman. Hold on a second, sir. I'm going to send it to you so that you can see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Message me this real quick. I gotta. I gotta see this. I apologize for the uh, slight delay in this. I want to. I want to see no. it. The delay is good. The delay okay. is good because okay, I want yeah. your response. We gotta. We gotta see this, man. I, I'm. I'm. I'm ready. Okay. Here's the message. 
Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Dear first of all, fucking that, first that off, picture. Zach, and second, that picture. Holy shit. That's a good picture. Huh? The following media includes potentially sensitive content. Yeah. And and so so people understand that. Oh was my Zach god. Snyder. Zach Snyder posted that. Zach Snyder, the uh the uh Holy Man shit. There, there's uh yeah, when Dawn of Justice director, just true Justice League director. Yeah, as far as as far as uh Zack Good Snyder is gravy, concerned, dude, that his, is insane. His Batman, his Batman would do that. Now, the conversation that has come up on this is the is a conversation that has been co- going on for a long time, and it has to do with <laughs> uh the censoring in media of female sexuality and female enjoyment of sexuality. Right. And the idea that a hero, uh, a hero like Batman would not be giving the female oral pleasure because that is something that is in some way taboo. And there have been movies that have specifically been uh, when they go before the uh, MPAA and have sexual scenes in them many of the time to get the R rating. Some of the toning down of sexual scenes are with regards to women's enjoyment of sexual scenes. Um, the movie boys don't cry where, uh, Hillary Swank was playing the role of Brandon Tina, a, uh, yeah. a character was female, yes, but dressed as a dressed as a man and had, uh, what was at that point, a. a best described as gender identity issues in a time where those things were not understood and were not, uh, were not, um, allowed really to happen. And there was a specific scene where that character, Hillary Swank's character was giving oral pleasure to a female character and they had to cut one frame of as they, uh, you didn't see the pleasure necessarily happening, but as Hillary Swank's character moved her head away from the uh, the woman's crotch, she wiped her face. Yeah, as if wiping any kind of condensation or any kind of fluid right, off right, her face. Right, the, of the wiping of the face, the wiping of the face had to be cut out for them to get the R rating because that was considered too salacious. Because that, because otherwise the head didn't have to be necessarily in her, you know, in the, her crotch. The person didn't have to necessarily have their mouth on her vagina. Yeah. It could have been somewhere else and thus for th- th- thus not as salacious, thus not as I, I don't I don't even know not as what. Basically that there's been in in media there's been these these this concentrated effort to either demonize or downplay any kind of women's enjoyment sexually. Oh, and I see where you're coming from. Okay, I can understand that. That's the that's the argument that's happening with this. Is this is DC being old school, uh, being an old school mentality? And no, 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 no. Our 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 masculine man isn't going to do this, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Well, that right. Supposed to be uh, as Bruce Wayne, he's supposed to be a rich playboy. Come on, that's fucking how to, true. How like that is a major. Happy. Yeah, that is a major. Uh, you 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 gotta you gotta give that part major credit. It's not like how uh, how would Batman not do that? <laughs> Batman is Batman and Bruce are the same guy. And then you go then you go uh, then you go across the uh, across the aisle there to uh, to Marvel Comics, and there is a scene in an actual Marvel comic. This is not in, this is not in a cinematic universe. This is not in an R rated cartoon like Harley Quinn is. This is an actual Marvel comics Mm -hmm. of the original Ant-Man. Hank Pym. Yeah. With his wife, Janet Van Dyne. Mm -hmm. And he's not only practicing cunnilingus on her. He's also shrunk down to little size and inside physically inside and around her what vagina. yep and she is getting off oh in comic book panel. my god yes this that's this an done, actual like, panel this is done back in like the 90s you don't see her vagina but he's no of course know, not small head and that he's small and headed that way oh yeah. my goodness and there is there is actual panels of her with her kind of throwing her head back supposed to be in ecstasy and moaning and what oh my goodness yeah this is so an marvel, official comic book marvel had a, 
Yup. That's insane, dude. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, I've seen a couple of memes from random ass people. Okay, that uh, I- I've seen a couple of memes from random ass people that that make that makes sense. But that's literally the most I'd seen of this. I didn't know that there were other people and these kinds of responses that were legitimately happening. I I didn't know that. Um wow, that is that is the part that the part that actual celebrities have gotten behind this is <laughs> it's insane. I love it. I love this. This is this is great. But um, okay, so the panel is not exactly as I described it, but I just sent you the panel as well. Okay, okay. All right. Good gravy. This is uh this is a very strange uh <laughs> subject. Uh I love this it. This is a strange subject. But this is I love it. This it's is something that's fucking that, great. This is something that I mean there was when we look back to what what is our experience with the first real Batman movie with Michael Keaton, right? And there was implication that him and Vicky Vale hooked up. But of then course there was. There was. That they, but then there was also implication that maybe they didn't because she wakes up and he's hanging from the, uh, with the weird boots upside down. She doesn't necessarily wake up in bed with him. You know what I mean? Right. So there's implication of that. There's implication, uh, of course, that him and, uh, him and Selena Kyle is going to hook up, but they don't fully. Right. They're right. almost there, but they don't fully because shit gets in the way. They wanted to. So there's some, some tension there, but like, this is, you know, again, th- those were all, those were all just, uh, just mind thoughts as far as what, as far as Batman, you know, is he going to hook up with, with Catwoman? Was he going to hook up with whatever? I mean, you do have the, uh, you do have later on, um, who was it? Who, who was it? Who basically raped Nightwing? Wasn't it one of the, uh, female villains that, that, uh, that, Kind of took advantage of Nightwing at one point, Robin. I, I, yeah, I know. Was, it, was it Harley or was it? Um, I forget who it was. I don't know who it was that actually did that. Uh, there have been stories of there have been stories of rape, forgiven rape in um, in uh, comic continuity. I think that it happened in. I think it happened in Marvel in like the sixties or seventies or something like that. Um, there was oh, a yeah. story where there was, there was somebody who was raped and then she forgave her rapist and like, and there's been yeah. There's been some seriously fucked up stuff that's happened in comics, right? But, but the uh, you you have the issue with the cunnilingus. That's the that's, yeah, that's the, the problem. Issue. Oh, Batman doesn't do Batman, that. Yeah, I, I, there was one meme that I on. think that that I think properly defines this for for me personally, um, which was somebody had the it was the meme of Batman sitting. I think he's sitting in a cafe and the cowl is on his head. And it's not Christian Bale, but it's the Christian Bale Batman head. Like, I don't know where yeah. this awkward ass picture showed up, but it's him sitting in a cafe by himself with the mask on or with the suit on. And it's just a meme that says, don't tell me this mask is not built for that. Yeah. The, like it really is. It, yeah. it really is. I mean, yeah. the mouth is open for a reason. People. It's there. It's there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and like, and the, the, the thing is, the thing is, again, this is something that this is something that, uh, is only, uh, is becoming a, a, a discussion now, but you, you were right in assuming that I was maybe thinking about Kevin Smith in this because Kevin Smith wrote a conversation about superhero sex. Yeah. Into a movie. Yeah. And it's one of the more famous scenes in Mall Rats. Yeah. Which is funny because they talk about Superman having sex, but then end up having a he ends up having a conversation with uh with Stan Lee later, which has nothing to do with Superman. But the idea of Superman having sex with Lois Lane and possibly killing her as a result, uh, you know, with the with the speed and power with which his uh sperm would ejaculate. <laughs> kind of funny when you think about it. Um it's, Guarantee it, it's, he blows a load like a shotgun. Exactly. He, he, he needs some kind of a gun license for it or something. And this imagine um, if she did get pregnant. Kid kick right through her stomach. Exactly. Just yeah, all she needs great. Is a little God, bit of that's such a quotable, like that's such a quotable and, line. And the thing and the thing is, that's it. so this is something that's always been on the the minds and imagination of all of the comic book nerds. Oh, for sure. And these these guys that are the showrunners of the Harley Quinn show, they're comic book nerds, I'm sure. They want it. They're trying to do justice to that, but no, 
DC doesn't want to let <laughs> Batman please his lady. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but here's one of those moments where I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, a public announcement. I'm, I've already kind of stretched myself a little bit on this episode, but I'm going to make more of a public announcement in this men, men and women, depending and anybody that doesn't identify men or women. If you are with somebody sexually who has a vagina, <laughs> they like it when you do that. <laughs> when you pay attention to that vagina with all parts of your body that they're okay with you paying attention to that vagina, they like that. Do that to make them happy. You might enjoy it too. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> do it, damn it. And damn it, DC. A public service Let announcement from James. Batman do everybody. It. Yes. It's a good thing. You'll but yeah, like dude, it. So this, I, I love the, I will say this. Um, I absolutely love the response from everyone. As soon as DC tried to put a fucking, just try to put a cap on it, like, no, this isn't a thing. Everybody, everybody was like, oh, fuck off, dude. Fuck off. You know he does. Everyone did it. We're going to we're going to make this a thing. Cuz and the, the, the and that is that is something about it. There's been nobody other than DC that has come out and been like, "Nah, Batman ain't going to do that." You're right. There've been really? there've like, been Batman No, Batman, there have been does Batman that. people. <laughs> yeah, there've been Batman connected people who haven't said anything and most of them are probably like, "Yeah, I'm going to just wait cuz <laughs> DC can say no, I can't play Batman again." Like Affleck's probably sitting there going, I might have a chance to play Batman again, so <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what Robert Pattinson does. I said that we have to throw him into the conversation because he's <laughs> Batman in a new Batman movie. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sure Kevin Conroy is kind of holding on, waiting to say something. Although that's surprising. Oh God. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that, uh, that, uh, that the Joker yeah. himself hasn't made any comment on it. Mark. Dude. Like, well, I, I guess not like, dude, he is such a powerhouse. Mark is such a powerhouse at this point that he could say something if he wants to. And it would, if he would be unscathed. Same with Kevin, I would assume. Right. Like, they just they've got the right guys for they are they are those voices legacy voices so yeah. there's nothing that you could do to to stop them even if they were to say something like that but it's really really hilarious just to think that yeah. this is such a controversial subject especially with what has been and you know what good on everyone else for responding the way that they did because it's not like who cares um personally i don't think that it's really a big deal that that I personally don't think that it's really a big deal that everybody responded that the way that they did in at least in uh, some form. There is a certain form of solidarity and positivity to this. Like, let's be real. Yeah. But um, I personally think that the best part of the conversation was looking at all of the other things that have happened in comic books in general. And you know that DC yeah. has touched on this and has done things like that. I can't I do, think of anybody I, I, right. Uh, I can't think of any of those situations right off the top of my head. But especially in a male-dominated situation, you can look at those. Uh, you can look at comics books past, and let's dissect the hell out of them. Let's call them on their shit because it's well, worth I do, doing. I do want to add that it is for me at least. It's an amusing thing that uh, in the Marvel situation, the. Uh, the the thing I, I sent you and uh you saw the you saw the I did the see piece, the panel right? I'm sorry the, the, you were talking so I didn't and, want to interrupt you and, but and that's you, hilarious you do see you do see the point where Ant Man, Ant -Man is small what's funny about that yeah. is again that's the Hank that's the Hank Pym Ant Man uh, and I find that amusing that he's uh that that's basically having him performing Cunnilingus and the actor who portrays Hank Pym uh Michael Douglas oh. famously said that he got his uh his cancer in his uh throat mouth tongue i forget exactly where it was but it was in that general region oh he, he famously said he got that per from performing too much cunnilingus so oh um, come on mike yeah so i i find that, I find that very very amusing um that's ridiculous his, 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 his wife thought he was pretty ridiculous too keep in mind he's married to Catherine zeta jones who's like in her 50s now and still super hot yeah. So well, he was also well, he was he's a he's a that. he's a total asshole. Like to be real, he's a total asshole. Yeah. I remembered hearing uh, back in the day that if she lost her, if if she gained weight while she was pregnant, 
after the kid, he said he'd divorce her or some shit. I remember uh, hearing that about him. Uh, and this, I'm sorry, stating that you got throat cancer from performing Cunnilingus is right along the lines of that. That makes me believe yeah. the the previous statement. Like, he just seems like a asshole. And that sucks, because yeah. I like him as an now, actor. He's a good actor. Now, the sad thing the sad thing about all of this, in my mind, the, sad, the truly sad thing about all of this is there's one person's opinion on this that we don't get to have. And I would just love to have heard his opinion, especially in his voice. Kevin? Wouldn't you? No. Kevin who? Conroy. Kevin Smith? Fuck no. Kevin, no. No. Whose voice, whose voice would you rather hear? Or her, and actually, let me, let me rephrase that. Who would be the best voice, humor-wise, but also to feel good about it, to inform the populace? <laughs> that Batman would most certainly take care of Catwoman in that way. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be great? First thing, first wouldn't thing. Wouldn't it I'm, be great? I, I, hold on. Let me let me guess first. Let me say it first because I think yes. I know where you're going, and I want to. I agree wholeheartedly. Keaton. No, not Keaton. No. Who? Imagine, imagine Adam West talking about it. Well, we can't have that. I know. That's why I'm saying it's so sad. God, it would have been great, though. But it would be didn't great. they talk about? Didn't he used to talk about how he used to like? There were like orgies and shit back in the day with him. Oh yeah, him and Burt Ward had like yeah. major orgies with uh, with uh, Batman fangirls back in the day. You know, you know, Adam <gasps> oh, West. Oh my Batman, God, Adam, Adam West Batman was down there in Munchen. You know he was. Oh yeah, yeah, he absolutely. Was a good boy. You know. <laughs> He knew how to take care he of He was business. a good boy. <laughs> and I, I, just, I just can imagine, just imagining Adam West. I could see him having a Twitter him. account and yeah. his, it would be three words, three words. Yes, I did. Exactly. And that's it. <laughs> and, and that's, that's, that's all that would need to be said. Yeah. So we were missing out on that wonderful opportunity. Oh God. For, for oh, Mr. Adam that's West sadness. To give his opinion on it. That's sadness. It is. It is. It, it is sadness. But if we've learned anything, we've learned that DC Comics is still, as as is proven by their their shoddy attempt at cinematic universes and at letting a, <laughs> well, uh, I don't take, say DC is bad at it. I think Warner's bad at it. Well, yes. Okay, I'll agree with you on on it being Warner, but DC lets that happen. Um, True. But DC is still stuck in a, in a backwards. Yeah. <laughs> DC DC still stuck in a backwards mentality. It seems like when it comes to women's sexuality and they really need to move up with the times and understand that women need to be able to be portrayed as being sexual creatures, yeah. enjoying sex and that not being a character flaw in any way, shape or form. Yeah. They got to fix their shit. And Batman, let's just be honest. Batman does that. Oh, ba- Batman totally sorry, does that. If he if he doesn't do that, he's not my hero. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I like that. I'm saying I'm saying That's, you know I'll agree with was, that entirely. If I was Batman for the day and I'm hooking up with Catwoman, I'm totally doing that. Although honestly, let's be let's be completely honest about this. If it, 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 she's Catwoman, right? Right. So technically, if he's licking or kissing her anywhere, no, is stop. He oh God, the pussy. No, am I wrong? I hate you. <laughs> you took it too far. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting on that. I, I've been wait, had that joke waiting for like three days now. Oh, I said God. it in my car to my wife, and she's like, "You're seriously going to do? That? So going to do that? Oh, I Mike's hate you. Lose his shit. <laughs> I hate you so much. So, <laughs> so from 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 James and from Mike, I'm 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 going to go out on the limb with this. We believe Batman would go down. On Catwoman. Oh, that's a fact. Possibly, dude. possibly poison ivy if he's feeling in a V, but definitely, definitely on Catwoman. There's there's, a- <laughs> there's some there's some uh, there's some issues with uh, with poison ivy. Her name is poison yeah, ivy. Sometimes it's worth it, bro. Oh also, God. though, isn't it, also in the Harley Quinn uh, thing? Isn't aren't her and Harley in a, in a relationship? Yeah. So I mean, a whole different story there. I was going to say that's them that they they've got their thing going on. 
But but anyway, it does mean that I'm more interested now in watching the. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, the Batman we know, the Batman that we love, he would do that. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed listening to both of these conversations. Again, one serious, one more amusing. Hopefully we leave you with something funny to uh, to go into the rest of your, your week. Um, Mike. Yes. Where would people be listening to us? Uh, well, you could be listening to us on the Xenialchronicles.com. That's our official website. Uh, if you want to get their shorthand, it's Zenchron.com. That's spelled X-E-N-C-H-R-O-N. We are always trying to expand to as many podcast platforms as we can get to, but you can currently find us on uh, quite a few of them. So just search for us. You'll find us. Um, and on top of that, we also have a YouTube page, which is something James mentioned at the beginning. If you are listening to us on YouTube, which you can, all our podcasts are uploaded there too, make sure that you are hitting the like button on that on that video because that helps us get spread to other podcasts. On uh, uh, in ser- It's a search algorithm thing, man. People hit the like button. We get shown to more people. That really helps us out. On top of that, you can leave a comment because we do respond to comments and hit the subscribe button as well while you're there. It's right next to that little like button, the little red button right there. And uh, oh, wait. Um, you know what? It kind of has to do with this conversation of the last, uh, th- this last conversation that we had, James, there's something that needs to be done and God help me. I can't, I can't remember. You can't, you, you can't remember. I can't so remember like right DC, now. You're like DC's version of Batman. I, can't remember <laughs> I well, dude, I'm I mean, sacrificing myself to walk right into this wall. Yeah, just to I, let this yeah, happen. Yeah. As you're as as it was as it was moving towards it, you were like, "Oh fuck, he's gonna do this, isn't he? He's gonna make some kind of comment about clitorises when he's doing this." I'm not, other than the one I just made. <laughs> click the bell, everybody, because yes. when you click the bell, that's how you get notified of anything new. And let me just rephrase: when you double click the mouse, that's how you get notified you're doing the job right. <laughs> See, I did say something. Dude, <laughs> click the bell, and everybody wins. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, while you're there, while you're there, as you've as you've left, because we we it helps it helps us feel a little bit better. Like Mike said, it helps with the algorithm. It helps with my crippling depression and thinking I'm not good enough. And <laughs> like my videos, not really true, but I still like it. It's 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 awesome. Well, I got three likes. I'm special. Anyway, like our videos, subscribe, <laughs> click that bell, and while you're there, check out. Uh, Mike has a couple other pages on YouTube. He's a little more industrious than me. I'm just you know sitting on my ass and doing nothing and yeah that's about it um so his, his other pages mike has uh, a page that he does with his wife chronosode games yes this is mike and his wife playing video games supposedly in chronological order of the story which apparently with the new uh my understanding is with the new uh legend of zelda whatever the new one's going to be it's the sequel to breath of the wild but nobody knows what the damn name of it is yet yeah because the titles give it away up, it may screw up the timeline even more than what the timeline is already are already screwed up. So yeah, the, it may be good to start getting uh, getting into what they're doing at Chronosode Games, so that maybe if you're a fan, you can understand what the hell is going on in the Legend of Zelda timeline. I just I'm just trying to play the games for fun. I'm not really worried about the timeline quite yet. I had I had enough timeline to learn uh, with uh, Halo. I'm not trying to do another game. Um, <laughs> if you're if you're not in, if you're not a gaming enthusiast, but instead are a music enthusiast, Mike also has another page. Yeah. This one is called Ruling Ruling Note Music. This is Mike talking about everything music related, stories about history of uh, famous albums, famous bands, gear information, recording tips. That's where you'll find it. Ruling Note Music. Go to those two pages. Subscribe, like those. Click the bell on those two. Why? What What'd you say? When you click the bell, everybody, everybody wins. wins. Yeah. Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. Y'all have a good one. Thank you for tuning in, friends. The journey continues next week. <laughs>